Hey everyone, my name is Joy, and today we are going to be taking a look at Hogwarts Legacy. The new trailer was dropped last night during the PlayStation 5 livestream event, and I jumped out of my chair, ran to the screen like my toddler, jumped up and down going, oh my god, oh my god, look at that, holy crap. So here we are doing a play-by-play. -play. Before we dive into this, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future Harry Potter content. And let's go ahead and get started. Magic, both beautiful and powerful, binds together our long history. That common bond we share is the legacy of Hogwarts. Magic. Okay, so we're already pausing at the beginning because first thing we notice is a barn owl. Obviously, owls are iconic in the Harry Potter series, and it's such a strong point to start out with. From beyond this, we can see some old-fashioned luggage on a carriage, so we know it's going to be older than the Harry Potter book series, which takes place in the 90s. We've also seen a flying carriage like this before in Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. This leaves us wondering, is this how first-year students arrived? Okay, and now the music flares and nostalgia hits because we see Hogwarts. The graphics are incredible and the scene is so familiar, but just as exciting as ever. I just noticed on this watch through that you can actually see more than just the castle because off to one side is the Quidditch pitch and a tower further in the distance. I believe this is likely to be the Owlry. Quidditch is definitely going to be a part of this game, although I do have my fingers crossed for a multiplayer option. Now it is time to add your own story to these hallowed halls and quite possibly shape the future of the wizarding world. All right, so we saw a lot in just those last few seconds. The first thing we noticed was the carriage and the Hogwarts logo on the side and the iconic courtyard that we see in several scenes during the Harry Potter films. We saw that the game takes place in the late 1800s, so what took place during the Wizarding World during this time? Narrator also says, add your own story to these hallowed halls and quite possibly shape the future of the Wizarding World. That leads us to believe that you're going to be playing your own character, a customizable student it seems. When he says possibly shape the future, I wonder how much of the game's story is determined by your choices? Will this be similar to what we've seen in games such as Skyrim, where you can level up different skills and choose between a good and evil character actions? Obviously, it's an RPG, so we will be seeing a lot of classic elements. Every corridor, every portrait, every stone in this castle. All right. Ah! Next up is the Great Hall, and I just have to say that this is breathtakingly beautiful. The lighting is gorgeous, and I am not over it. The hall is packed to the brim with house symbols. We've got Slytherin here, Gryffindor here, all the houses are seen. You've got banners here on the side, and even the lamp fixtures are the house mascots. I love this little detail at the bottom of the stained glass with the phases of the moon. You've got your iconic floating candles, and I'm excited to see the decorations for the other holidays in the game like Halloween or Christmas. Hopefully they don't miss the mark on it this time, and then they use an eagle instead of a raven for the mascot for Ravenclaw. We see the students at the feast, the owl podium like in the films, and more art depicting the house creatures on the stained glass. This is most likely the Hogwarts library with a giant moving portrait. Is this a famous astronomer, perhaps? Right after this, we see the moving staircases as featured in the books and in the films. I was thinking maybe there's some kind of like in-game, like mini-game involving the moving staircases, or are they just could it possibly be a nuisance while trying to travel through Hogwarts? Either way, it does look graphically very interesting. There is the library again, another shot from a different angle with some students. We've got one kid who is just done with schoolwork right here, probably pulled an all-nighter. We've got some students just hanging out over here, and then a very cool image of a student possibly summoning a book. We do know that the books put themselves back into their places, but I have not seen a book actually go to a student's hand, at least in the books or the films. So that's an interesting addition. We don't know what book it is. I was thinking maybe it's like an older version of Hogwarts A History. That would be a neat nod. Not gonna lie, the moving knights 
Suits of armor are a little creepy, only because I imagine that they're empty, but they're moving. Of course, it's magic, but like, come on, it's a little weird, right? We also see a few statue busts here and a another portrait. Nothing really to note on this section that I've noticed. Let me know if I missed anything. Who came before? Here you will meet lifelong friends and grow into your own magical ability. Another iconic scene, very nostalgic to all of us Harry Potter fans, and it is the sorting ceremony. I was wondering if they're going to do some kind of mini quiz. Are you going to be able to re-roll if you don't get the house you want? I assume so. That's, that's usually how these games go. But who are these two mysterious people? The current headmaster during the 1800s of Hogwarts was Eupraxia Mole, and she was the headmistress from 1876 while Phileas Nigellus Black was also headmaster during the 1800s. Could this possibly be a more dark arts focused Hogwarts? What do you think? I do have to make a quick mention at the pictures that you see over here, which have the hog's head on them, which you can see at the studio tour in London and is also in the films. Here we have the courtyard, which could potentially be the scene from the film with Professor Moody turning Draco Malfoy into a ferret. I also noticed a student back here with a green apple, which could potentially be another small nod towards the films as Draco is seen eating a green apple, though that might be a little, a little bit of a stretch. <laughs> we also see our little friend, the barn owl from the beginning of the trailer. And then we move on and we see a couple of students, Hufflepuff students getting ready to fly. Could they potentially be heading off to Quidditch practice or just flying practice? Either way, I'm very excited to see the mechanics for the flying portions of the game. I have to say that I really like the design for the broomsticks as well. It's very different from what we have seen in the films for the newer broomsticks, such as the Nimbus 2000. In the classrooms of the world's most talented professor. All right, potions class has started. The first thing we notice right here is a bottle of blind worm sting and another uncertain bottle, perhaps gillyweed? A book lies open and I'm curious to see what the books in the game will be. How many are gonna be older versions of the books we already know, such as advanced potion making? New character is introduced here, a somewhat staggering young man. He seems like he's possibly in his 30s um, and he puts a potion bottle on the table which has what looks like a lion body on it. I have no idea what it could be. Leave a comment down below if you have any ideas. Talented professors. And while your journey begins at Hogwarts, brewing potions, we get a quick glance at the herbology lesson, and I'm surprised that the professors we've seen are so young. In the films, they were aged up, but I believe that they're much younger in the books. If you recognize any of these plants, leave a comment. Come back to potions class, and we have two young Gryffindors getting ready to possibly play a prank on the class. To me, they look pretty mischievous. You can get a really good look at the badges here. Taming fantastic beasts and mastering spells. Next, we are potentially at the edge or inside of the Forbidden Forest with another Hufflepuff student. We've got our sweet and big-eyed moon calves here. Portkey Games used the design for the mobile Harry Potter game, Wizards Unite. And I can see two statues back here as well. Is this Gryffindor and Ravenclaw? Following this, we have what looks like the Ravenclaw common room. I'm only guessing that by the blue and starry ceiling. We've also got what looks like raven feathers in the windows and a blue sofa here. I spot wizard's chest. That's another potential co-op opportunity. And I would really hope that there is some kind of connectivity in this game. If you remember in Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, Dumbledore's army, also known as the DA, goes into the room of requirement and they use these practice dummies to practice their spells on. So I'm wondering if this is a classroom or maybe the room of requirement. I'd really be interested in seeing how it changes throughout the game. There is a larger world beyond. Oh yeah, Hogsmeade is probably one of my all-time favorite Harry Potter locations and I'm very excited to explore it. It looks particularly different from the ones in the films because we only ever see it in the winter time. There is a big brass cauldron hanging from one of the signs and I mean honestly someone just take me to the three broomsticks please. On these walls. Here we can see two hippogriffs and students riding them and that is super cool and super pretty. We are definitely going to have some fast travel available, which means the possibility of this being an enormous open world. A world filled with dangers you can't yet imagine. An ancient knowledge. 
and Fury, and if you remember them from the Half-Blood Prince, Dumbledore and Harry go to get the Slytherin Locket, and they are surrounded by these things that are grabbing at them, and Harry has to fight them off while also feeding Dumbledore some water. It is a very emotional scene. The iconic Dementors show up as well now, and this seems like it could be the interior of Azkaban Prison. Just how big is this game? This is definitely a cell, right? There's a locking gate here, and you can recognize the windows from the prison architecture. What is this mysterious creature is a grap horn. Long gone from this world. That strange and mysterious talent you possess may be the key to unlocking this dormant power. We move on to the wall shifting. Is this how we uncover hidden and secret locations? This is definitely a big nod to the Diagon Alley scene in the first Harry Potter film when Hagrid takes Harry to Diagon Alley. This next section kind of looks like it could be a hidden area of Hogwarts. I'm not sure if it is still at the same building or at maybe a different hidden location. We see a bridge repairing itself in it looks enchanted or something, and it leads our character to a closed area. I'm getting kind of Chamber of Secrets vibes, but there's no snakes around. Your potential is limitless. It seems like there are going to be all kinds of creatures in this, which I think is super cool, including this giant troll. But what form will it take? Then we're followed up with this mysterious villain. And I say villain because, I mean, look at this guy. He's got a skull mask on. And as we know, the Death Eaters also wore similarly scary masks in the Harry Potter films. If you look next to him, they have what looks like a port key, which is also the same design as the ones from the Wizards Unite game. So I wonder if that is going to be a big portion of this game or just another version of fast travel. Take a look at this guy's chest. He has what looks like basilisk fangs across it. A quick pause here and we see a bunch of runes which we saw previously and there is what looks like an open tomb. Did this guy come out of that tomb? I don't get that vibe, but possibly. The journey ahead will reveal what you stand for. We follow up with an amazing graphic of a dragon bursting out of its captivity possibly. And there is another masked figure off to the right side. These look like two adults, so definitely not students. A quick blast towards an Acromantula. Definitely not from Aragog, as this precedes him and Hagrid. It looks as if they're located in a dungeon-type terrain instead of the Forbidden Forest. Dueling the mysterious character again. Definitely the reoccurring bad guy of the series. Could this potentially be the boss? The final enemy? The choices you make now will define the legacy of Hogwarts. The dragon flies off into the distance and we pull back to see Hogwarts again, right where we began with possibly your own character. And this leaves us with a lot of questions about the game. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this play-by-play -play of the trailer and taking a closer look at all the details. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe because I will 110% be streaming this game when it is released next year. If you like Harry Potter content, this channel is also for you, so please go ahead and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye!